Hi, welcome to another episode of Middleware Friday, episode 70, June 15, 2018, Azure Event Hubs for Kafka Ecosystems. So in this episode, I'd like to talk a bit more about Azure Event Hubs for Kafka in the ecosystem, so the Kafka endpoint that has been added on top of Event Hubs. So I've talked this, uh, about this a little bit during my talk at Integrate, which is about a week and a half ago when you watched this episode, when I talked about service messaging or Azure and messages in general, so about event hubs, a service bus, um, those type of technology, event grid, and um, storage queues. Um, we also have some featured content in this uh, episode uh, by blogs by Eldert, uh, Wagner, and Richard. So they wrote some uh, blog posts around this latest addition to the event hubs, and there's also an info queue article I like to point out. I like to acknowledge the fact that I use some of the content or explanations from uh, Scott Logic's blog, so you find the URL here. And let's look at Kafka. So Kafka is a distributed streaming service originally developed by LinkedIn. So there is kind of a software um, streaming ingested service and the APIs allows you to uh, produce or, or data streams to topics and a topic is in a partition log of records which each partition being ordered immutable and being immutable. And then you have the consumers on the other side that can subscribe to these topics and basically that's, that's the concept, and you can run Kafka on a cluster of brokers uh, with a partition split across cluster nodes. So basically, you need infrastructure for this. And then Kafka um, is kind of highly uh, scalable um, for you. But, you know, it might require some extra effort because this is something you have to as a, install yourself and manage yourself compared to, for instance, if you had all the other offerings I'll mention, which are managed by the cloud provider itself. So this is a little bit different than a an, an, an common distributed architecture. This is called the distributed commit lock architecture. And this is more optimized for other types of use cases where you focus a little bit more on scalability and throughput instead of um, concentrating on flexibility and desire and kind of delivery guarantees you usually have with a broker. So the Kafka architecture, um, basically is the fact you have topics, um, the divide into group messages, you have partitions to allow parallelism, and you have consumers, which can be grouped in something like a kind of a logical grouping in a consumer group to, to share the load, or when a lot of these streams uh, are ingested, then you can have one or multiple consumers and consumer groups that each on its own pace consume those events. And then you can even, for um, Kafka, set up some type of replication Enhancing the reliability of, of the service and you know your Kafka cluster in general. So this is kind of what the um, the Kafka architecture looks like, more in the schema picture. So you have your producers on one end pushing those events to partition partitions. On the other end, you have uh, consumers and consumer group, and it can be one or multiple consumers in a consumer group. So it's kind of a, a logical separations, and then each can ingest or consume that data on their own. Uh, pace. So this is kind of how the architecture looks like. And then you have Azure Event Hubs. This is a service in Azure uh, able to do this highly scalable streaming of data, or these event suggestions, that's what it's capable of. And then it's you can store that data or have that as a, a buffer up to seven days. So you can replay also the buffer itself. In the end, even also with Kafka, there's a certain limitation in time and once uh, the message are not consumed or um, already once consumed, then kind of these uh, they disappear. And you know, event hubs can process and store events or data or telemetry produced by uh, different software and devices that is capable of. Uh, data centered event hub, you can transform and store that using you know any real time analytics provider or you use some uh, batching or store adapters. And basically, you provide this this uh, pop up type of uh, mechanism in the cloud. Um, for low latency at a real massive scale. So you can really ramp up um, stream ingesting for, for big data. So event hubs, for instance, you can use that for behavioral tracking in mobile apps, or you have maybe some, a lot of traffic information on your web farms, or you have this in-game event capture, for instance, with the Xbox, that's what Microsoft uses for. You have tons and tons of telemetry from um, industrial machines or connected devices, you know, if you look at more into the, uh, the IoT um, type of things. And there's a competitive offering, so with Amazon Kinesis, Apache Kafka, or Google Pops Up. So Google Pops Up and Amazon Kinesis are like Event Hub's managed event streams services. 
and more Kafka is more something like software you have to install on your own um, hardware, etc. But now with Event Hub, you have this Kafka endpoint enabled. So Event Hubs in general, here's an, uh, an overall picture here within the Azure um, um, stack or user Azure platform. So you have all these event producers, you kind of collect or stream or ingest those through event hubs. And then like I already explained, you can do this fast streaming using uh, Azure Stream Analytics, or you can use some of the adapters to store that data for um, machine learning purposes or other analytic purposes. And then um, if you look at this picture, you can eventually, once you analyze that data and make that more visible using a uh, front-end technology, technology, something like a Power BI dashboard. So if you conceptually map Kafka versus Event Hub, so that's kind of depicted in this little um, um, table. So you have clusters and namespaces, you have the topic versus uh, or at least you know, Event Hub and Event Hubs, partitioning, consumer groups, um, offset and synchronous numbers. So this kind of a little bit the concepts between Kafka and Event Hubs. So basically what um, Event Hubs offer is this Kafka endpoint. So once you provision the, uh, the service in Azure, you can, as this picture depicts, you can enable Kafka. Um, Kafka endpoints are available for event hubs provisioned in West or East US and currently what I believe also in Europe. There's of course some limitations with uh, the Kafka endpoint because the Kafka endpoint basically kind of mimics Kafka, although once you approach the endpoint behind that endpoint is event hub, it's not Kafka. So with that regards, there's some limitations to the Kafka support as depicted here. So you have compression, says bias retention, log compaction, Kafka con uh, connects. So some of these capabilities um, or support is not there for that Kafka endpoint. So basically the Kafka endpoint is going to enable Kafka applications using that type of protocol, but then the ingestion of data is done by event hubs and not by a Kafka cluster. Like I mentioned, there are some competitors um, for Kafka or from event hubs, the way you look at it, um, which are Amazon Kinesis and Google pops up. Based on that a blog post, I acknowledged in the beginning, they do some comparisons. So I'd like to point these out to show you this, that there's some differences between these services. Of course, Apache Kafka runs on-prem or kind of needs to run on infrastructure. The other are managed by the cloud provider, either Amazon, uh, um, Microsoft, or Google. Um, some of the capabilities are similar. Some are differences either in throughput, um, whether or not the maximum side of blog, for instance, stands out. Um, then there's some latency, for instance, you see in this comparison, um, some have numbers, so not, some have not. So the Apache can be pretty, uh, has pretty low latencies compared to, uh, to the Kinesis one. And then you have some of the push-pull type of models which are supported by most of them. And then you have some languages support as well, which is picked here, but basically with .NET, you are able to use any of these streaming services. The configuration for um, using that um, Kafka endpoint is basically through uh, the fact that you have to use some SASL. So Kafka brokers support client authentication using SASL. Um, and the SASL authentication can be enabled um, concurrently with the SSL encryption. So Azure Event Hubs requires SSL and TLS for all communications and uses this shared access um, signature for authentication. So that's part of this password. Then you have to set it on plain and you have to use a full qualified name. So this is the configuration for a um, Java client. So you need to use this type of configuration because Event Hub uses SSL plain for authentication and SSL SSL for transport security. So that's why you have to set this up and this is depicted in the SSL configuration. Um, so I've done something similar. I built two clients, but then in .NET, not in Java, to produce messages and also consume those um, from this Kafka endpoint that sits in front of the event hubs. So when I was building this demo, or at least try to, to do this in .NET, I was helped by Wagner Severe, who also wrote a blog about it, so I'll point that out later, enabling you or enabling me, and also you in the end, to, to push or produce events pushing that through that Kafka endpoint, which will end up in event hubs and may also the ability to consume this. So let's go to this demo now. So I will start my consumer and I also will start the producer. So the producer will send those messages Then I'll flip to the consumer. So this is a pretty simple demo. It says, hey, hi, welcome at Midway Friday. So this is kind of the producer consumer. And let's look at the code for a second. 
So this is the consumer part um, of the code where you also find the accessible configuration Mac. Let's look at the producer again with the configuration. That configuration is a little bit different than the Java one. And this is basically how it looks. So I showed you quickly um, with two um, kind of um, small applications. So to produce the events and consume those, a little bit of the code. And basically how I could set that code is basically by uh, based on that um, blog post from Wagner Severa. So he basically explains how you can use .NET to produce and consume the messages. So this is one of the content um, I like to point out in this episode. And please do follow if you want to uh, do this through the .net, .NET way. And you'll find the documentation on the Kafka endpoint for, for um, the Kafka endpoint for event hubs. You, on the, you find some demos around using uh, Java, um, but for that we need Maven, etc. So if you want to do it the net way, this is the way you can do it, explained by Ivan Severa. Then there's another blog post I like to point out, um, which says, hey, Azure Event Hub, Apache Kafka, uh, match made in heaven for messaging. So this is well uh, written by Elliot Grotebo. So this is another extensive blog post around this new capability in Event Hub. So definitely a worth a read as well. It gives you a little bit more in-depth information. And similar, Richard Sirota has wrote about um, how to use that Kafka interface in front of Event Hubs uh, using the Spring Cloud screen. And basically what he points out that the strategy Microsoft is following by mimicking Kafka with an endpoint using and then by basically using event hubs or uh, it also compares this to Cosmos DB which provides a MongoDB API which mimics kind of the capability with Mongo but then in the background when you store your documents you're just using the document store in Cosmos DB and not the actual MongoDB itself. So another good worth blog post worth to read. And then there's an InfoQ article where I bring some of this stuff together. Um, this is something I wrote. So if you're interested, in, you can also read this InfoQ article, which is about only two minutes. So it's InfoQ, Azure Event Hubs, Kafka. But it also brings back some of the other stuff I just mentioned in the other community content. So there's some resources. Um, again, also with regards to the Kafka endpoint and Event Hubs, you can find that with one of the latest build videos um, on Channel 9. There's a tutorial, um, but this is based on Java. You can follow. There's some documentations on docs with regards to the event hubs for the Kafka ecosystems. And in general, if you want to learn and read more about Kafka, you can find this also on the Microsoft web website, which is depicted here as well. Um, finally, also want to mention, you know, I was speaking at Integrate this year. It was really uh, interesting uh, topics and stuff. Um, I talked about Azure messaging, or I call it service messaging, including the event hubs and this Kafka. Um, endpoint was a part of it. There will be an Integrate 219, so that's already been announced. Um, the venue and data are not disclosed yet, but you do or are able to buy already a ticket for £499. So it's kind of the same URL as 218, but then it's 219. So you can you can go to this event if you want next year. You can already pre-book this. Then again, I also like to thank Vista360 uh, for being a great host, and also thank you uh, for watching uh, this episode. Um, if there's more, please let us know and we'll, uh, we'll see if we can provide that for you.